They're some of the most awe-inspiring natural wonders in the country. Oh, wow. Oh, man, look at that. Horseshoe Bend, the Grand Canyon, Zion National Park, and the Wave. OMG, we're about to enter the Wave, and it looks so freaking cool already. I saw the, some pictures from the Instagram, so yeah. we decided to come to here for our summer vacation. These stunning backdrops lure millions of visitors with the promise of a perfect post. People are just taking selfies and not really enjoying where they're at. It's kind of like, oh, I got my selfie, let's go home now. It's a social media gold mine, but for some locations, Insta popularity proving to be too much of a good thing. Social media has focused so much attention on particular places that they really are at risk of being loved to death. With throngs of visitors causing irreparable damage during the recent California poppy blooms and at Joshua Tree National Park, some of our public lands are now threatened by overcrowding. We set out to see how these national treasures are dealing with crowds being driven in part by social media. Horseshoe Bend was once a little known spot in Arizona where locals would hang out to catch the sunset. But almost overnight, an overlook that once saw 4,000 visitors a year began seeing 2.2 million visitors a year. That's over 4,000 visitors a day. 2015 was when it really exploded. That's also when we saw this huge rise in, in social media, especially Instagram. I think it's a huge contributor. We provided the railing so people can take that safe selfie. That new railing, a part of a larger effort to manage the explosion in crowds, which were causing trash buildup and safety concerns. And how important is that, keeping up with the infrastructure? Well, if, if we didn't invest in the park, we would see a lot of resource damage. When you add uh, two million visitors to a place like Horseshoe Bend, mm -hmm. you have to manage human waste yeah. and trash. We just left Page, Arizona, a place dealing with this onslaught of tourism, now heading to the Grand Canyon, a place that knows tourism really well. We're gonna check out the North Rim, which people tell us is supposed to be a little bit quieter. Holy smokes. Welcome to the Grand Canyon. Oh my God, I love it. Jerry Ginsburg has spent the last 30 years photographing every single national park and many of our public lands. One thing that makes me very sad is to see canyons and forests and trees that were formerly very pristine, just completely destroyed. And with a greater influx of people, it creates more wear and tear. And eventually, given enough time, they'll lose their scenic attractiveness. For young and upcoming photographers, many of them use Instagram as their medium. So why shouldn't they be given a chance to go take their Instagram photos at the same places that you were able to take your photos 20, 25 years ago. I hope they are. I hope they can and do that and give them fresh interpretations. They may have to go out on their own and find new and different places to create original images. Right across from the South Rim of the Grand Canyon, one of the busiest portions of this national park, here we are in the North Rim and it's almost complete solitude. We went to Horseshoe Bend day after yesterday. That's where we met Chad Rosso, who had just come from visiting Horseshoe Bend. What made us go there was the whole Instagram blow up, and uh, this is a completely different experience. How would you compare the two, Horseshoe Bend versus North Rim? This is, like you said, solitude, and that's a zoo. And yet, just two and a half hours and one state away, Zion National Park, only 15 miles in diameter, attracts four and a half million visitors a year. That's nearly two million more visitors than Yellowstone receives at a fraction of the size. We're definitely having issues keeping mm. up. Laura, why don't you guys go in the back? Allie Baltris has been with the National Park Service for nearly 30 years. How many do you have? Seven. All right, we'll get you on the next one. Back in 2012, we had really no lines. So if you had told me that I was going to be running a shuttle line and have people actually staffing the shuttle line in order to board shuttles, I would have laughed. You know, we started seeing more crowding around 2013, and then it just kept going up from there. It's late morning and this line is still hundreds of people deep. The park ranger here tells us that it starts at about 5.45 a.m. and it stays this way all the way through 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Despite the lines, the shuttles and the heat, everyone we met said they were having a great time, <laughs> especially at the Narrows. 
a breathtaking river hike that's one of Zion's most popular attractions. Were you able to still enjoy it even though it's kind of crowded? You just tend to just go around them, mm -hmm. just enjoy, try to enjoy your time, not let them like, get in your way. But not every Insta-famous location is open to Zion-sized crowds. We're about to enter the lottery to see if we get to hike the wave, but we were told that we probably have a better chance of winning mega millions. Every year, more than 150,000 people apply to visit the wave, a rock formation on the Arizona-Utah border, but just under 10,000 are selected. With only 20 visitors per day, the wave is one of the most restricted public lands in the U.S. At 9 o'clock, we'll draw for uh, 10 selected spots. Inside, we meet Paul Laboulette. You keep coming back. Yeah. <laughs> a German tourist who's applied five times. That just looks so cool. <laughs> I want to do it. When did you first yeah. see a picture of the wave? Probably on the Windows uh, screensaver. That Windows desktop picture made the wave one of the first ever viral destinations. The wave has been featured on social media, and we're seeing a, really a dramatic increase in the number of people that want to come out and visit. Mike Herter works for the Bureau of Land Management. He says the agency is considering opening the wave for up to 96 permit holders per day, in part due to high demand. That's more than 400 percent the amount of people that we're letting in now. What we're doing with the wave really is doing an environmental assessment. Can we, in fact, increase the number without tipping that balance where solitude is lost? and it, it just becomes a, a line of people that are, are coming through this spot. So what are the dangers of this? Potentially spoiling a, a beautiful place. It would be very challenging to put 96 people into the way because it's a relatively small feature. Taylor McKinnon from the Center of Biological Diversity worries that the feature is already endangered at current use levels. It's an American right to enjoy public lands, but it's also our obligation to ensure that we're not ruining these places. These, you know, very fine, delicate sandstone structures, even under the current use levels, we're seeing impacts that the BLM never anticipated. While exploring the trailhead near the entrance to the wave, Taylor showed us one of the reasons why this area is so protected. Here's a great example of the soil crust. It's actually alive when it rains that crust allows the, the moisture to actually absorb. And it's very sensitive to people and to being stepped on. And here you can see where old footprints. Yeah, look at that right there. These people old footprints right have destroyed it. Taylor, I'm not going to lie. This kind of looks just like a plop of mud. It does look it like does, a plop of mud. But you're saying this is important? The soil crust aesthetic, unfortunately, doesn't <laughs> nearly match its ecological <laughs> importance out here. Our chance to further explore this delicate ecosystem rests in this bingo cage. All right, the first lucky person is number 10. Do you want it? Do you want it? <laughs> this is number 11. Yeah. What do you think when they called your number? Excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 4 a.m. wake up call. We are up and ready heading to hike the wave. We set out just as the sun was rising over the desert with Corey Unsworth, who's been leading tours to the wave for five years. We are currently in Utah, headed towards the wave. And when we finally arrived, yeah. this is the first thing they see. It did not disappoint. Is it everything you thought it was going to be? Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. For Corey, it's all about striking that delicate balance between nature and those who are seeking to bask in all of its glory. You're a tour guide. Your company would benefit if they opened up more tours to the wave, yet you still don't want more people in here. No, no, the How reason come? I do this is because I love it. This is one of those spots you don't yet have that overcrowding sensation, and so it's nice that we still have a few places around mm -hmm. that we can go and, and, and still have a, have a unique experience on our own. For Nightline, I'm Maggie Bruley on the Arizona-Utah border. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.